culminating event is the Eco Trade Show. It has pathogens and it also has microorganisms all around each one breed. Okay. What else? Let's just go all this week. Things that we need to do all this week. Isabel? And testing. Yeah, building and testing. And what, what else is involved in building and testing? That's right, Seesaw. At the beginning of the unit, we have an entry event where we go to the Sungnam water treatment plant. The high school kids do all these water quality testing uh, activities with the fifth graders, which is just, it's just awesome to see because, you know, they're developing these relationships with these older kids who they totally look up to and are in total awe of. We started moving to TDUs three years ago. Um, TDUs meaning transdisciplinary units. So when, when I first got here, um, everything was kind of a standalone subject. We taught social studies yeah. and then we taught you, science. Have an, is we there taught another gun? Reading, we taught use? writing. Um, and now everything's kind of blended in into three TDUs, so one for each trimester. So this TDU is called Innovation and Design. The kids are creating a product or a campaign or making an invention that is either brand new original idea or adding on to an idea that already exists in order to improve it. It also covers marketing so the kids study supply and demand, they study different economic themes in social studies. We teach them actually through the use of Settlers of Catan through the board game some of these themes which is pretty cool. And then they read about, they read a lot of nonfiction articles about environmental issues. And then some of their inventions come through in their narrative stories as well. It really just opens up their imagination. So I was planning to do a double filter. And then that- You see a lot of kids just really excited to get right to work, to start building. Um, but you also see a lot of kids are overwhelmed because they're thinking I'm supposed to solve a problem with the environment. I mean, the world is bigger than they can comprehend, right? So uh, there's, a, there's some apprehension there, but I think it's mostly excitement. Um, and then when they start to get into using the tools in the collab and building actual products and making their inventions come to life, um, that's when you really start to see the the magic in, the, in their eyes, you know. All right, I just don't want to test it while their iPads and stuff. Like so first, yeah, I was trying to go with genetic cloning, like taking the uh, gene out of the DNA and recloning it. Chris is uh, super tuned in. He's very, uh, he's a very hard worker. Um, he's a pretty serious student, um, and he started with a pretty wild idea. Chris had this idea of um, replicating DNA of extinct animals and kind of building a new dra a real Jurassic Park. <laughs> but then I found out that this is in the like difficult and costly like time table. So I decided to move on to something called genetic markers. So we will have just this stringent and then extract the DNA from the normal animal and then we would follow it with the feces and then we would again extract that DNA and compare it. And when we were able to find that animal, we would give it nutrition to stop and encourage breeding. I, I had to rush, I didn't have much time. I mean, sometimes it can be pretty frustrating if your ideas can be rejected, but then at the end, I think it's worth it because you can learn a lot of things from your mentors that you didn't know. Um, I picked garbage and waste pollution because I thought that at first we were researching about it, all of the topics on the slide that Mr. Lee gave us, and then I found out that garbage and waste pollution is harming the environment very severely, so I decided to pick that topic. Um, and then we've got Jiu, who is, uh, she latched on to her mentor first session. She's like personality plus and just loves to talk. Um, and but she's also super curious. So I got to work with Chiyu and she's a very brilliant student. 
Um, and basically she was working on uh, towards reducing trash. Um, and so we talked a little bit in the beginning stages of the project, we talked a little bit about um, the trash that's on land and the trash that's on in the water. Your, your, your bioplastic's just gonna come mush if you use like certain, like if you use the... Uh, and so she thought about ways to have to create plastic that was biodegradable. So we came across bioplastic and we just, I was learning a lot of information alongside of her and it just was clicking, clicking, clicking with her. And she was so excited about it and how to create it. And I hadn't assigned any homework for the project. By the next day, she knew all about it. She knew where to get the supplies to create it. She knew, knew how much she needed to create a prototype of it. Um, and she was already working on things that she could design with bioplastic. And I mean, that's real science. That's existing science, uh, but it's real science. And just to see the power of her imagination and the drive, the personal drive to really work on this right from the get-go, I mean, teacher couldn't ask for more than that in a student, so. There's a lot of moving pieces. Um, the trade show is coming right up, and so we've got just project time built into every period or at least every day. Um, and the cool thing about it is that we have the makerspace, we have the collab, we've got Mr. Jacobson and we've got Mr. Lee in design, and the kids are using tools and they're using recycled materials and they're using heat lamps and solar panels and testing um, possible boats in the pool and you know the the whole design thinking process that they start and go through over the course of the unit it's pretty impressive to see what where they start and then how they get to what they end up with and then I found this website called how stuff works and then it talks about how bioplastic works and the pros and cons. So for this time uh, we had um, to go to collab today so mostly today was a time for like prototyping so where we made our mostly our project like prototypes so where we will furtherly advance it and maybe next week. I think I need to find these like technological di like difficulties because I mean there could be a flaw in the system so I I'm trying to make it as perfect as I could. I thought I was confident. I thought my project was good, but then at the last second, sometimes I think of negative parts, and then what should I do? How should I fix it? Um, I'm kind of worried. I feel like it's so, uh, so far so good. Without, Although I've dealt with some bumps on the way and flaws, I still seem to find my way back, and I can go in a straight line. Mentors will be coming to the trade show as well to see what it is all the kids have put together over time. It's just it's such a great relationship to see building um, from its infancy to the finished product and see the wow factor on the high school kids' faces when their little mentors have grown up and their inventions have um, just been improved over so much time. Partly removed from the water because of the greenhouse gases. I'm excited to see his ideas of uh, preventing extinction or the extinction of ex extincting animals. If it's satisfying, I'll give him like a pat on the shoulder. <laughs> uh, I want to try to deliver my pr prototype as um, best as possible because that's basically like the most important part of this project because that's exactly like how we would solve this problem like from the four and then the five. So the most important. Um, I'm feeling a little nervous about today. Like I need to create, it's a little rush. I need to create everything, the posters, but I'm also kind of excited because I'm ready to show off what we have all been working on for the past few weeks. I'm kind of excited and nervous at the same time. Um, I feel like honestly she's going to do a pretty great job um, just because until the last time I met her she was set on the idea that she had she had even the list of materials that she needed to create the plastic that she was trying to make um, so right now at this point if, as long as she combines the ingredients together and creates the plastic and s displays it tomorrow um, then she's pretty much set so I feel like 
she's she should be confident right now. I think I need to get finishing touches to my website and do my promotional material like posters and business cards. I hope, like you know, um, you could win. I know it's a big, oh, I mean, big way to go, long way, but I really want to win. <laughs> I like winning. Um, so I did my We invite, of course, everyone at the school, admin, um, high school students, middle school students, and their teachers. Any older audience for a 10-year-old is an authentic audience. Uh, we've also reached out to a couple people that work for NGOs in the area. Uh, I did hear someone from the Korean Times might be showing up. Unlike one of my first people, I was actually extremely nervous because I mean I could actually fail in this project and get a bad grade, and nobody could actually come to my presentation. So you f you get this like nervous feeling that you might not be able to succeed even if you did this hard work. I was I thought I would get a little nervous, but I wasn't really nervous because at the thought of an eco trade show, I thought it would be this really 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 big space with like thousands of people. Uh, my strongest point was probably expressing the concerns and then uh, giving my solution because I was able to give a lot of factual evidence and back my claims up with them. Well, it seems like she knew everything, so I thought it would be a little boring for her. But then she seemed to want to know what was going to like how I was presenting or what kind of promotional materials I made. Uh, out of the good things we just spent on this whole trimester working on, it's like we get this like more basis of like of our problem, animal extinction, for example, and then it gives us like a more understanding of what's happening in society too. So what's that, that's that risk of uh, main, main need control? We wanted to have just a simpler way of assessing the kids, and so I approached Gary Johnston about creating some sort of on-the-fly form that we could fill out, and he put the rubric not only into the form completely, but also it's more of like a dictated comments that we can talk about as like right as we're done with the talking to the students or even during their presentation and it also breaks we've also broken down each aspect into specific subjects so that it fits in with the report card too so they've got clear literacy guidelines they've got clear science guidelines clear social studies guidelines this new form this new electronic assessment hopefully will be one of the things that definitely pushes us forward. Mm -hmm.